Hello viewers, welcome back to Students Diaries and today we will discuss about glycogenesis which is the subtopic of glycogen metabolism. You all know that glycogen is the storage form of glucose in animals while the storage form of glucose in plants is starch. When we talk about animals, uh, in humans especially, its liver contain about 6 to 8 percent of the glycogen, while in muscles it contain 1 to 2 percent glycogen. But however, as we know that the muscle mass is a lot higher it, uh, as compared to liver, so overall in muscle the glycogen reserves are high in our body as compared to liver. Glycogen is stored in as granules in the cytosol. It means that all the machinery which are required for synthesis of the glycogen or degradation of the glycogen is present in the cytosol of the cell. Liver, liver glycogen is important because it maintains the blood glucose level when we are in a hypoglycemic state or if there is a long delay between the two meals it is the glycogen which will provide us the blood glucose while muscle glycogen is important which when we have muscular exercise or increased mechanical activity so that glycogen will be degraded and it will give us glucose for glycolysis purposes so that more amount of ATP can be produced to enhance the muscular activity. So why store glycogen acts as a fuel reserve? That is an important question. First of all, it is uh, stored in the reserve form because glycogen can give us uh, rapidly the glucose production. So it could be it could be easily mobilized when if it is present in reserve form. Secondly, glycogen can generate energy in the absence of oxygen. So if there is a deficiency of oxygen or hypoxic condition, even then we can utilize glycogen for energy production. And thirdly, the brain depend on continuous glucose supply. So uh, there is no reserve house for brain. So that is the glycogen reserve which are present in the liver will provide the glucose level constantly to the brain cells. Now come to the glycogenesis. As its name indicated, whenever the word genesis is used, it means there is a synthesis of that molecule. So glycogenesis is the synthesis of the glycogen that occur in liver after a meal when blood glucose levels are high. Of course, glycogen synthesis will take place in a situation when the blood glucose levels are high. So that happens when we eat uh, our meals and after that uh, the glucose level absorbed and through hepatic portal vein it is reached into the liver and from the liver the excess of the glucose is converted into glycogen. So the process of glycogenesis occurs in the four major steps. Number one is the synthesis of uridine diphosphate glucose. And second is that uh, further it will require certain primer to initiate the glycogenesis. And third, the glycogen synthesis by glycogen synthase enzyme. That is important enzyme, the glycogen synthase, which will be involved in the production of glycogen synthesis of the glycogen and fourth one is the formation of the branches in glycogen we know that uh, glycogen is basically um, a linear chain which contain alpha 1 4 linkage and as well as it contain the uh, alpha 1 6 linkage which is a branch chain so special enzyme required for formation of the branch chain when we talk about the glycogen synthesis so first we come to the synthesis of the uridine diphosphate glucose which is the first step of the glycogenesis. When there is excess amount of glucose in the liver that glucose will be converted into glucose 6-phosphate with the help of glucokinase enzyme. Of course when there is increased glucose in the blood more insulin will release more amount of glucokinase enzyme will be synthesized so glucose 6-phosphate will be produced. 
we know that glucose 6-phosphate is a kind of intermediate that it could go either way it can go to the glycolysis pathway it can go to gluconeogenesis or pentose phosphate pathway depending on the type of demand to the body and the type of signal it received so in that case because the glucose level is high in the blood so it will prefer to that glucose 6 phosphate is converted into glucose 1 phosphate and that will happen with the help of phosphoglucomutase which is a kind of isomerase enzyme and that will just change the position of the phosphate molecule from 6 position of the glucose to the 1 position of the glucose and then come the uh, next step in which glucose 1 phosphate will be converted into a uridine diphosphate glucose molecule and the enzyme which will be involved is a uridine diphosphate glucose pyrophosphorylase enzyme and of course in that case uh, uridine triphosphate will be converted with release of one inorganic phosphate and then uridine, that uridine triphosphate will be converted into uridine diphosphate glucose so this is the first step which is the synthesis of the uridine diglucose diphosphate glucose in the st second step is the requirement of the primer to initiate the glycogenesis if there are a certain uh, glycogen molecule which have contained a uh, few glucose molecule in it that can uh, provide a starting point for to this uridine diphosphate glucose molecule if uh, pre uh, form of glycogen are some glycogens are not present uh, then uh, to initiate the process of glycogenesis it must contain uh, some kind of primer and that primer or initials which could provide the initial starting site uh, so that it that uridine diphosphate glucose molecule attached to it so that initial starting site or we can say that initial hook which can uh, react with that uridine diglucose phosphate is provided by this glycogenin molecule and that glycogenin molecule uh, has that hydroxyl group which has the potential to react with that uridine uh, glucose and uh, initiate the process of the glycogenesis glycogenesis is uh, basically a tyrosine um, which is an amino acid in nature and that will give you the starting point for glycogenesis and the enzyme will involve in it is the glycogen initiator synthase so it will result in the uh, production of the uh, synthesis of the glycogen at non-reducing end of the uh, that glycogen so uh, in the third step glycogen synthesis will take place by the glycogen synthase so one that starting material the hydroxyl group which has provided that initial kick to the synthesis of the uh, glycogen uh, then it will be easy uh, with the help of that glycogen synthase enzyme more amount of uridine diphosphate will be added to that non-reducing end of the uh, glycogen uh, primers and that all these uh, formation of the bond uh, because this is the linear structure so all these things will be alpha 14 glycosidic bond and uh, that will give you a linear structure with the help of the glycogen synthase enzyme now the fourth step is the formation of the branches in glycogen we know that glycogen molecule is a, um, a branch structure in, uh, in uh, animal cells in the animal liver cells so that wherever if there is a need uh, to add a branch into it then there will be special enzymes which are involved which will be involved in it which included the glucosyl uh, alpha 4 6 transferases and uh, it will uh, give you that uh, branch point uh, with the help of a shuffling of the molecule so the formation of the branch is brought about by the action of branching enzyme that is glucosyl 4 6 transferase and in the process 2 atp will be used 
with the addition of the glucose molecule so in addition of one glucose molecule will result in utilization of two atp molecule uh, so that is the process the four step process of the glycogenesis which will give you the end product in the form of the glycogen and it will be stored in the body in the liver and in the muscles and it will be provided uh, at the time of the demand to the body so there is references see you in the next lecture till then allah hafiz